How are we doing, everyone? Sam here, United People's TV, here with another interview. And this time I'm joined by Rick Elfrink, who writes for ED, which is uh, the daily newspaper out in Eindhoven, because I really want to try and find out some information about Ibrahim Sangare. Now, Manchester United have been linked with him over the last couple of weeks. He's a powerful central midfielder, plays for the Ivory Coast, a key component of that PSV team that, of course, beat Ajax and Eric Ten Hag in the Dutch Cup final this year. And, of course, the team that Ruben Nistelrooy is about to manage next season. So uh, thank you very much for, for joining me today, Rick. And, and, yeah, it's going to be really good to sort of to get a bit of insight from from a Dutch perspective into, into Sangare. Now, uh, how, how has he played? and What's his career been like so far? At PSV, is he is he like an outstanding player in the Eredivisie? Are you surprised by the links with moves to Premier League clubs and Manchester United? No, totally not. He's, I think, one of the best players in in the Dutch league, um, which is quite remarkable because, yeah, we uh, in Holland we have a kind of culture that we always look um, how players behave in ball possession, and I think his qualities are not uh, his best qualities are in the game against the ball. Uh, uh, yeah, this, this player has, yeah, has incredible skills when it comes to um, uh, interceptions, uh, defending. Uh, that is his, uh, his big power. Um, but I think he also improved a lot in, in ball possession. Um, when he came to Holland in 2020, I think yeah, not a lot of people heard of uh, Ibrahim Sangare, to be honest. Uh, he came from Toulouse. That's uh, yeah, that's of course a, a club in uh, in French. Um, I think they they finished then twenties in the uh, in the first uh, league, the the league uh, So yeah, it was um, yeah, of course a player who was not really known. And um, yeah, in in his first months, there was of course uh, he he needed some time to adapt. Because yeah, the the Dutch game. What I said, um, yeah, a lot of people here look at at uh, how how players behave in ball possession. Yeah, then he had a little bit. He was a little bit unlucky because he made I think one or two mistakes. Who, uh, yeah, and then then PC conceded a goal because of that. So there was some criticism. Um, but I think yeah, when you looked through that, um, he was not as bad as people then said. He was already a good player then. And uh, yeah, he improves uh, this season. Uh, yeah, I would not say incredible because last year he was already a good player, but this year I think he was one of the best players in the league. And uh, only the the period after the Africa Cup, the Africa Cup in in, uh, in January, yeah, he had some problem problems. He was a little bit tired, I think, then because yeah, he played a lot of games, and um, yeah, he didn't get a lot of rest after the Africa Cup. I think he only got two or three days rest. And then he played a game again. So, yeah, then he had a, yeah, he had a kind of difficult uh, period. But I think after that, he, um, yeah, he recovered. And, and what you said already in, in the cup final and in the, in the end of the season, he was important for pace. Say. And uh, are you, um, if, can you offer us an, uh, any insight into the links from Manchester United? Uh, have you heard anything from the Eindhoven uh, side of things as to whether we're actually approaching the club? Because there's been reports that uh, that he's got a release clause in the region of around about 37 million euros, if I'm correct. Uh, and he's also talked previously about uh, dreaming. I, I, I don't know if it's actually whether it's come out of his mouth or not, that he dreams of playing for the Premier League. You know, what, what have you heard from the Eindhoven side of things? Are PSV going to be looking to sell him this summer? Well, for, to be honest, they try to keep him. <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, Ruth van Nistelrooy became the new manager of PSV. And, uh, yeah, they tried to keep him, of course, because he's a key player. Uh, I think he and Cody Gakpo, um, yeah, are the, are, the, are the players that could, could go to Premier League uh, this, uh, this summer. Um, yeah, in, in the case of uh, Ibrahim Sangare, indeed, there is a release fee of uh, 37 million euros. So that's a lot of money. But, yeah, for a Premier League club, it's not that much. It, it's, it's an average... Uh, I think it's average money in England eh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to a transfer. Uh, but in Holland, it's it's a kind of lot of money, uh, 37 million euros and for sure for PSV. Um, I think they sold only Irving Lozano once for more money uh, for like 40 million, I think. So it, it, it's it's near a record when they um, when they sell him. 
Um, to be honest, I, I did not hear about uh, concrete interest of uh, Manchester United. What we heard is that clubs like uh, Newcastle, um, Aston Villa, that they are really uh, following him. Um, yeah, also Liverpool uh, sent some scouts, um, is what we heard. Um, yeah, in England, you hear also that Chelsea and Manchester United are interested. I did not get signals that it's uh, really concrete at the moment. Um, but yeah, what I said, Ibrahim Sangare can be a real interesting player for the Premier League because of yeah, what I said, he's uh, he's incredible, uh, strong. Um, I can I think he can play uh, many matches in a row. Um, I think he, he yeah he's able to um, yeah the load of the Premier League. I think he uh, yeah he's able to to do that. Um, yeah, what I said, his his. Defending skills are really incredible. This is a kind of player in Holland that we do not always uh, recommend uh, the way they should be, I think. Because, yeah, yeah he's really uh, in, in every team. I think he would be would be so important. And also for, for Ajax and Feyenoord, he would be a very crucial player, I think. Uh, I, I, would, you, yeah. you, you led on to it there. Now, I think you, you'll be able to offer us a little bit of insight into this. You've obviously watched Eric Ten Hag at Ajax and you know the style of play that he has and you know the midfielders that he likes to play with. Do you think that Sangare would be a midfielder that could fit into an Eric Ten Hag system? Do you think it would work quite well? We're, we're being linked with a move for Frankie de Jong this summer to Manchester United. Could those two work yeah, well as a, as a balanced duo in midfield? I think it's more log logical for United to look at these, uh, this, this, uh, this prospect because, yeah, Frankie de Jong is, I think, more a kind of player for Ten Hag. Um, yeah, I think Ibrahim Sangare is then a player who can uh, play before the, the defence, so as a number six. And when you play with two uh, defending midfielders, he can also play, of course, as, as a defending midfielder. Um, but I think, yeah, his, his best qualities are not in the offensive Although he can be uh, he can be important in ball possession, eh? but his 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 best uh, yeah, his best play is in yeah defending in, in the, uh, the the in playing against the ball. That is that is what he um, he is best in. Now with uh, with um, watching Ajax in in the Eredivisie, does Ten Hag typically really need a player like um, Ibrahim Sangare or? or, or... You know, if you look at Schoener and and that, so Schoener and De Jong back in 2018-19, or you look at towards Gravenberch and Alvarez now, does he really need a proper defensive midfielder? Because it's a big question that a lot of United fans have about his style of play, or or, or does he operate more with sort of two midfielders? Suppose like De Jong, who are, who can play in possession. What? Because for me personally, I think we desperately need a player like Ibrahim Sangare. You, as you say there, somebody who sits in front of the defence, who's best... Yeah, what what, what uh, Frankie de Jong, what he can do. You saw this week against uh, Wales eh, in the last uh, last minute, what he's able to do. And then he crosses the whole field. And yeah, what Frankie de Jong can do, that is incredible. I, I saw these things. Uh, yeah, I saw them two or three times from Ibrahim Sangare also this season that he crosses the, the, the whole pitch. Um, so he's able to do that. I think he still has, um, yeah, he still has the, the possibility to grow. Ibrahim Sangare, I think, uh, yeah, when you come from Toulouse to PSV, that is a big step. And uh, yeah, I think he adapted really well. And uh, yeah, he's still a young player. He's 24. So I think he, there is a lot of uh, yeah, space to improve in the coming years. Um, yeah, if, if United needs him, to be honest, I, I, for me, it's very difficult to say I, when you have the choice between uh, Frankie de Jong and Ibrahim Sangare. Of course, I think, yeah, then Frankie de Jong is a more logical name for, uh, for United. Uh, when you need someone who, who yeah, for, for the balance in your team, um, yeah, then Ibrahim Sangare is a very crucial, uh, crucial player, of course, when you have two. Uh, very offensive midfielders, and when you play with one number six, then yeah, he's, a, he's I think one of the best options you can get because this yeah, guy what, has really uh, incredible interception. What, what do you think the chances of um, of Ruvan Nistelrooy really wanting to hold on to Ibrahim, Ibrahim Sangali for one more year? Do you think there's a chance that he stays, or do you think whether it's to United or somewhere else, do you think Sangali will be leaving PSV this summer? Yeah, I think after two years, of course, it's always uh, the, the player as a management. Um, yeah, it's maybe possible to cash now uh, for the management also. But yeah, for his career, 
it could be useful maybe to stay one year uh, at PSV. It could also be good to to go to a club like uh, Newcastle or uh, and what I said, Aston Villa, and then adapt one year to the to the Premier League like uh, Gini Wijnaldum did in the past. Huh? He, he also came from PSV, and he also went to to uh, yeah to uh, not to a top club, but uh, yeah he went to Newcastle then. So I think that was a very useful year for him also to adapt to the Premier League first. Um, yeah, it can also for PSV is a good player, so they they are really, yeah, they are not wanting him to leave. But yeah, there is a release fee when when a club pays 37 million euros, then Ibrahim Sangare goes to the Premier League. So yeah, and of course uh, yeah, there is a management behind this player, and they they can uh, they can also earn some millions. Yeah, you know how it works. Uh, yeah, players make make transfers, and um, yeah, it's possible that he goes in the summer. They they will have to uh, yeah. They will have to count with that, and yeah, if it, if it doesn't work out the uh, transfer, then uh, PSV will be happy because he stays, and then another player maybe goes there. So Cody Gakpo is also a player who can uh, go to the Premier League maybe uh, this summer. Yeah, Cody Gakpo. I, I watched him in the uh, in the Dutch Cup final. He's definitely probably one of the standout players from PSV, and I would put Ibrahim Sangadi in in that category too. But Rick, I appreciate your time today, man. It's good to hear from uh, from the Dutch perspective on Sangadi how good he's been. The release clause is really interesting. As you say, they're 37 million euros. It's a substantial fee for, for a Dutch club to receive, but in the grand scheme of how big transfers have got all around Europe, it's relatively cheap for what could be a very powerful, dominant central midfielder. Manchester United are desperate for that. So fingers crossed, I'll be speaking to you again in a couple of weeks' time after the links with United get a bit well, stronger. Yeah, what happens? But let's, let's see, eh? let's see. Eh? But I appreciate your time today, man. And uh, uh, thank you very much for... Uh, for joining me for, for for the bit of insight that you offered there on the Sangari deal. Obviously, if United go in with that money, PSV will sell. It's, 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 it's a good fee for a player that could change Manchester United's team, but let's see what goes on. But Rick, I appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Top level. Ciao.